Zena, it's over to you. I should do the work now. Uh, should I do the work now? Yes. Okay. Oh, how can I say? We can't well, see you properly. Welcome, what? Well, Welcome everyone. I hope you had a good week. Uh, um, now I'm going to I'm going to ask someone to pray for us. Alicia and Aziel. I want to choose um Alicia and Aziel. I don't think they go to uh, Zena. Ask somebody else to pray. Ma Mata, no. please pray want? for us. Do you want me to pray? Okay, I didn't hear you. Can I pray? Oh, okay, Alicia. All right, Alicia. You're muted, Alicia. Pray. Okay, yes. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day and for the night. We thank you for your and please help us in every situation. We thank you, Lord, from night to day. We thank you for bringing us here in the meeting. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you. It's Aziel. Amen. Welcome, Uncle Charles. Thank you. Um, can I go ahead? Yes, you can end over to Uncle, Uncle Charles. Charles is going to talk to us. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thank you guys for having me again um, on this uh, as we close the as we close this presentation on civil engineering today. So I will I will go straight into it, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so let me share my screen. Good, right? Yes. Okay, can you see my screen, guys? Yeah. Great. Okay, so I'll do a small recap of what we discussed last week, and then I'll proceed uh, with today's uh, completion on civil engineering. So last week we last week we looked at um, at civil engineering as say, and we say that we'd say that civil engineering is is a is very broad in itself and um, because civil engineering in itself is very broad Okay, just excuse me here. I'm having two screens. I think they're playing tricks with me now. Just one moment. Okay, so last week, as we had said, we had said civil engineering is very broad in itself. And that, um, can you still see my screen? Dr. Sheps, can you see my screen? 
Yes, I can see your screen. Yeah, can I can screen. see your screen. <clears throat> okay, great. Okay, so like I had said last week, civil engineering in itself is very wide and it's got different branches. And when we started last week, I think you remember we had uh, started by, um, we had uh, looked at different types of engineering that are there. Civil engineering is not the only type of engineering. And I said, you guys can go ahead and find out all the other types. Maybe your interest in not, is not in civil, although I'd love you to be in civil engineering but you can look at the, all the other types. And then um, we said the subjects that you especially need is maths, physics, and chemistry. So you have to be in interested in mathematics and you have to be interested in the sciences. And I had encouraged you guys to say, uh, whatever you do, make sure that you study maths daily until you know uh, what goes around with mathematics. And then um, the other thing, we had looked at is what you need in order for you to qualify and study uh, engineering, say adversity and uh, such the like. So we had looked at that as well and um, we had discussed that. Then we looked at engineers and we said engineers are people like us and all of us have got the ability to, to the scientific ability or engineering ability inside of us. We had looked at the process. Engineers go through a process that we call the engineering design process. The first thing we do is ask, what question are you trying to answer? So we're trying to find, we define the problem we want to solve. After that, we start imagining solutions that we're going to use. Then we plan how we're going to solve that problem. Usually in this case, we start drawing diagrams, drawings and things like that. Then we can also make a prototype Remember, a prototype is like a model that we make of the real thing that we're trying to create. So sometimes we make prototypes in the lab and then we start testing them. Then we also, uh, having done that, we start to, having tested them, we can start improving on that solution that we want, that we have, and we modify it until we get the best possible solution and we build uh, whatever we have. And the other thing is, uh, uh, what do civil engineers do? So that is also the thing. We understand the problem, and then we do designs and drawings. And then afterwards, civil engineers also construct what they would have designed. Then we learn some key words, a project, what it is. It has a scope. It has the cost. There's time related to it. And there's also what kind of work we expect or the quality of work we expect. Then we also do what we call designs, and then there's construction. So there are different types of uh, civil engineers. There, I'm a water and wastewater engineer myself. That's my specialty. But like I said, when you go to varsity, they teach you about all of these types. It's not like they just teach you one, but you start spe to specialize as you start to go to work because there's so much to do. So you need to choose where you are best fit or what you like to do the most. You can also do two or three. There is no restriction to it, and uh, no one can stop you from choosing what to do. But you will find that there is always one or two where you choose to be a specialist in, and that you are really good at. So we also learned about water and wastewater engineering. You remember, we learned about the water cycle, where our water comes from, and uh, and all that. Then I also showed you about how the process that we take in order to bring water to the home. The first thing we do as a water demand, we calculate how much water will be needed in a new town, for example. We identify a water source, there must be a river there, maybe a dam, and then we take that water, we're in a process we call abstraction. We, we pump the water to a water treatment works where we purify it, and then sometimes the water is also stored in what we call reservoirs, which are big tanks that we construct together with structural engineers we construct these on mountains, and then we connect pipelines that take water to our homes. And we talked about the importance of pure, of pure water and keeping our water clean. And then we also talked about what happens when you, for example, after you've taken a bath and you unplug the bathtub or the water that you use for washing, where does it end up? Or when you flush the toilet, we call that water sewerage water. 
And that water, we talked about how we take it again as civil engineers. We have pipelines that we built around our homes, around the times, the towns. It pumps, it takes the water away to what we call a wastewater treatment works, where there is a whole process that goes into treating this water again. And then in the end, it goes to a river again. So our source is usually a river and the same water ends up in the river again. Usually it ends up in the same river that we took the water from. So we need to keep our rivers clean as well. Okay, then uh, we talked about dams. You remember us uh, talking a lot about dams and how we build dams. And as civil engineers, we do dam so that we have a pool of water. Remember, we said water is always flowing. Sometimes there's heavy rains, like now we're in summer, there's gonna be heavy rain, but throughout winter and all that time, we never really had good rains, especially here in South Africa. Uh, the rains only come during summer. So in that time when we have the rains, we have built dams so that they can store up this, this water so that it's not just wasted away to the sea. So we keep it up uh, and then we can use it for our purposes. So that is what civil engineers do. We want to make sure we keep the water, but without also disturbing the life in the water. So we try as much as possible to minimize that. So that was last week. So today we're gonna look at uh, structural engineers. In a way, we've already looked at them. Remember, you remember this slide that we had before. So I had explained to say that what a, what a civil engineer does, an architect draws the plan of a house but a civil engineer is responsible for its design. So that is the difference between a civil engineer and a, and a structural, uh, sorry, between an architect and a structural engineer or a civil engineer. So it's important for us to know the difference. So generally architects are like artists. They draw a nice house. They have an idea of what they want, but engineers are the ones who are responsible for making it strong. So there's usually two kinds of materials we use when we're building a house. We use what we call, uh, uh, it be, together they become what we call concrete, but it consists of cement, which we mix with some uh, soil or, or, and also some stones. And then we, 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 then we also use steel. You can see in the picture on this slide, you can see in the picture to the far right, there's some steel, at the top of this structure, it's still under construction. And the white things that are sticking out is the, is the, uh, the concrete. So those two, two uh, materials have different purposes because uh, uh, of, of, that is why we mix them together. Their, their strength combined makes the, the building strong. And that is what we do as civil engineers. We design that, we determine what sizes we need, what kind of materials we need so that those buildings or those bridges and things like that do not fall. Okay, so I think you remember this story. There's a, a nice little story that I learned as a kid. The story of the three little pigs. You remember it? You would remember that yes. in the three little pigs that, uh, so I'm gonna let it run for just two or three minutes. It's, it's very short, but you remember that I want you to notice the kind of materials that these little three little pigs used. And from them, you will see the difference that structural engineers have to have in mind when they construct anything. So I'm gonna let it uh, play just now. Three little pigs. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs and the time came for them to seek their fortune build their houses. The first little pig built himself a house of straw. The middle brother decided to build a house of sticks. Okay, don't know what happened there. Let's, let's replay it again. Three little pigs. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. The three little pigs. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs, and the time came for them to seek their fortune 
and build their houses. The first little pig built himself a house of straw. The middle brother decided to build a house of sticks. It wasn't either a very strong house, but the third pig, the oldest, decided to build a house of bricks. He did not mind hard work because he wanted a strong house, because he knew that in the woods nearby, there was a wolf who liked to catch little pigs and eat them up. When the three houses were finished, the three little pigs were happy dancing and singing. Who is scared of furious wolf, furious wolf, furious wolf, who is scared of furious wolf? Just as the first little pig reached his door, out of the woods popped up a big, bad wolf. The little pig squealed with fright and slammed the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, cried the wolf. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the little pig. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in, roared the wolf. <sighs> and he blew the little straw house. Away raced the little pig to his brother's house of six. The wolf was really angry, so went behind the youngest pig, the house of six, where the pigs were singing. Who is scared of furious wolf? Furious wolf, furious wolf, who is scared of furious wolf? Suddenly, the wolf roared. <sighs> Open the door. Let me come in. No, we won't, said the pigs. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow down your house, roared the wolf. <sighs> and threw down the little house of six. The two little pigs raced away to his big brother's house of bricks and started to sing. Who is scared of furious wolf, furious wolf, furious wolf, who is scared of furious wolf? This made the big wolf perfectly furious. Open the door, little pigs. Let me come in. No, we won't. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow down your house. But he couldn't blow down the little house of bricks. He decided to climb and get in through the chimney. Climb, jumped down, and fell right into a kettle of boiling water. He sprang straight up the chimney again and raced away into the woods. The three little pigs never saw him again and spent their time in the strong brick house, dancing and singing. Who is scared of furious wolf? Furious wolf? Furious wolf? Who is scared of furious wolf? Furious wolf? The end. Okay, so what we learned from the story of these three little pigs, I know it's a story we've had ever since we were young, but in engineering, civil engineers, one thing that we specialize in doing is choosing the right materials for the things that we construct. You can see uh, from the first two little pigs and the difference with the third one. They all had different kinds of materials to choose. And, you know, it's easier to get straw and build a house or to get grass. Grass is everywhere and you don't have to put in any work. It's also easier to get wood. You can build your house of wood. It's very easy. It's quick to build and you can do it easily. But at the end of the day, it's not about how quick you build your house or uh, and it's, it's about how long will your house last? Because when the, that fox came, the fox can represent wind, can represent heavy rains that can come, it can represent anything that will come to try and destroy your house. So if your house is strong enough and is built well, to not, well enough, that house will withstand against anything. So as civil engineers, what we do is we find out the kind of problems that are there in a place and when we found out those problems, we design solutions so that we know, like for example, in, in Japan, there's a lot of earthquakes. So engineers in Japan are different in the way they design their houses and their skyscrapers and all those tall buildings that they have. They design them differently from how we design them, let's say here in South Africa, because in South Africa, we rarely get any earthquakes. But in Japan, they get earthquakes that can destroy buildings and bridges and houses. So the different kinds of there are different kinds of materials that we use in different places because we need to understand the areas. So you may also find that in a desert, uh, for example, 
they they don't normally have uh, lots of rains, and the the he, so the houses that they design are different from how we would design our houses here, where we usually can get tsunamis or things like that that are, uh, uh, come to that are incident because of the weather. So as civil engineers, that's what we do. We determine materials and we build the best houses because we know the kind of conditions that we live in. So you would enjoy doing that as a civil engineer, understanding the materials you need to use to build anything. Also civil engineers, as you can see on this slide, civil engineers are also structural uh, engineers, uh, are also bridge engineers. So we have structural engineers who design bridges. There are different kinds of bridges that we design. A bridge is any structure that allows people to cross over. Let's say there's a river or, or anything like that. Sometimes it's another road which is below, but bridge engineers design the right kind of a bridge for us to cross over. I think you've seen sometimes in the news, the stories of kids who cannot, who cannot go to school because their school is across the river. And, and then uh, they walk to school, for example. So as civil engineers, we come up with solutions. We design a bridge that can, uh, that, so that uh, there can be cars that are transported over the bridge to go wherever uh, they must go. So it is also our, our role uh, as engineers, civil engineers, who are structural engineers, to design bridges. Okay. So I remember there was a question about a prototype last week, and I showed you on this slide, the prototype is right at the center. I remember us talking about that last time. So a prototype is just a model of a, a real thing that you're building. We do that as well as civil engineers, where we do a, a prototype and we test it in the lab. It's part of our design uh, work that we do. So uh, that's, those are the things. Play around uh, when you have maybe building blocks and things like that, and conceptualize what you want to build and try to build anything. That is how civil engineers think. Okay. So sometimes uh, structural engineers can also be tunnel engineers. Maybe you've seen one or two tunnels and structural engineers can be tunnel engineers. I think on your way to Limpopo, if you come from uh, Zimbabwe, you, you, you would have, if you have driven to Zimbabwe or to Bay Bridge or Messina, you would have gone through a tunnel in uh, Makado. Uh, Limpopo. So they, those, that, that tunnel was built by civil engineers. What we do is we'll make a hole through a mountain. Let's say we're building a road and we realize that it's more expensive to keep going up the mountain or to, because we need to shape the mountain in order to make the road flat and nice for cars to drive on. So if we can sometimes realize, okay, it's cheaper to actually make a hole through this mountain than it is for us to try and go up the mountains and things like that, because it, it will cost us more. So we, we can drill a hole through that mountain and we would have a tunnel. So um, that's, that's an example of, a, of tunnel engineering. So we designed that tunnel so that it doesn't collapse. Cars can go through it. It's just like a, a, you know, a, a hole through the mountain. Then there are also, also you'll see at the bottom right, there is a, at the bottom right corner, there is a, a, a tunnel through the sea. In Norway, there's a 12 kilometer tunnel through the sea. It's under the sea, it's underwater. And civil engineers built that. So we design it and we build it so that there, is a, there are cars that are actually driving in a tunnel which is under the sea, surrounded only by water right around. So imagine designing that kind of work and making it work. It has to be something so strong that you know, uh, it doesn't collapse because if it collapses, then it's dangerous because everyone in there would die. But we make sure that when we design this, we, we make it strong, we make the best we can and cars, can travel, the distance becomes shorter, for example, to drive under the sea and things like that. We do that as civil engineers. Okay, and then uh, also for railways, 
the, that can be done as well. The other two pictures are showing tunnels for railway lines. Especially in, in England, they even have an underground railway line. The railway line is just underground. It's a wall tunnel from a, one city to another city, but it's, all, it's only underground. So civil engineers are the ones who design that. So another aspect of civil engineering is, is what we call transportation engineering. Transport engineering consists of roads uh, engineering, railway engineering, airport engineering, and uh, there are different kinds of roads. You can find um, the common roads that we know, which are, we call it bitumen roads or asphalt roads, the black roads that you know. There are also uh, another type of roads, concrete roads that we make from concrete, but all these are done by transport engineers. Okay, so I know you guys are aware of roads. You see roads everywhere you go. There are different kinds of roads as well. Yeah, and you would have seen them. All that work is done by a civil engineer. It's done by a road engineer. He's the one who designs those. We take our time when we design that. We find out uh, the shortest distance that we can use for that. And sometimes there are places that we need to avoid as part of our design. Let's say there's a there are swamps in a place or wet area, wet lands, what we call wetlands. We try to find out, you know, how we can build around them and things like that. But at the end of the day, we're trying to make it easier for people to travel from one place to another, one city to another city. So imagine if there were no roads, life would be terrible. You know, the, without roads, there would be bushes everywhere when all the food that we need Imagine uh, when things come, let's say they come from China, they come uh, by sea, they land in, uh, at the port where they are collected by trucks and trucks then drive all the way down to Johannesburg to bring all those things that we may have imported from other countries. All we need is a road network. So a healthy or a good road network in a country is, is a very good system. It connects people. It makes life easier for everyone. It makes transporting food easier. It makes you know, health uh, care easier and all those things. So roads are considered to be part of a, what we call an asset of a country. They are the wealth of a country. A good country always, has, always tries to make sure it has good roads and a good road network. So that's what you do as well if you're a road engineer. You learn how to design roads. So that is a part of a design that was ongoing for a road engineering. You see on the left, the road engineer has designed the road. You know, we draw it out, we have drawings that we draw, then we give it to what we call a contractor. A contractor starts the construction process, they build that road. Another aspect that a civil engineering does in a transport engineering is railway engineering. Also, railways are very important. Here in, in, uh, in Gauteng, you know of the Hau train, which has made it easier for people to travel uh, around uh, you know, Gauteng. So we know of the Hau train. Civil engineers are the ones who designed that. We design where the railway, we design the railway lines everything you see on that railway line is okay so also we use railway is to uh, and trains to transport goods minerals because minerals are what we use already you can see the railway line is made of iron it's made of steel so that steel that a railway engineer uh, uses is 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 taken from underground. It's mined by a mining engineer, then it's processed and they make it, and then we, we take it and we, we make it to use, we use it to make railway lines where our trains are going to run on. This also connects places and it makes it easier to transport things around the country and to transport people as well around the country. So it can be goods or people. And a civil engineer designs all that. Then we also have airport engineering. A civil engineer also designs airports. We don't design the aeroplanes because that is work that is done by an aeronautical engineer. We, we also uh, 
don't design maybe if you see cars then things like that that is not what civil engineers design but you'll find that at an airport everything around an airport the platform where the aeroplane is going to run the runway for the aeroplane we design that we design all the buildings we, you see there a structural engineer designs that uh, the how train goes all the way for example to the or tambo uh, international airport the railway line that goes there was designed by a civil engineer we design all the water that is used there we design the pipe work networks everything so everything around an airport involves a lot of civil engineering and sometimes we have an, an engineer who is called an airport engineer who just specializes in the design and construction and and uh, maintenance of uh, railway of um, of uh, airports so we call that an airport engineer so if you are in, if you are interested as well you could do that as part of your study as a civil engineer then we also have engineers that we call construction engineers there are civil engineers who specialize only in construction okay so they their specialty is just to make sure that they construct around they understand construction they specialize in it they develop their skills so a, a designer is an engineer who's usually in the office doing drawings you know making sure uh, 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 the road goes in the right places and things like that when he's still drawing it then the construction engineer is the guy you will find on site he wears a helmet on site is making sure what has been designed by the design engineer is now beginning to be constructed comes to life on the ground so he's the guy who's working on the ground making sure everything that has been designed comes to life okay and then uh, the next kind of civil engineer is called an environmental engineer an environmental engineer cares about the world that is around him he cares about the world we live in and wants to make sure that the world stays safe because all construction activities have a lot of uh, things that can damage the environment but remember what we said last time that when god created adam and eve he gave them the responsibility to look after the earth if we don't look after the earth right now we have problems with say global warming which has become a big big problem so if we don't look after the earth we end up with lots of pollution around we end up with problems like global warming we end and uh, the earth becomes a dangerous place to live in so we need to look after the earth and to do that we have the services of environmental engineers so these are guys that are concerned mainly about the environment wildlife you know all those things that is what they do so uh, talking about pollution on this slide i'm showing you different kinds of pollution you can see water pollution in there there are fires and uh, sometimes gases that come from factories and we talked about the ozone layer and uh, we talked about well, when we look at this we're talking about global warming and how that destroys the ozone layer the ozone layer is a a blanket we call it a blanket of of oxygen which surrounds the earth so the earth is surrounded by in the atmosphere there is oxygen and we all know we need oxygen to live but all these gases they go into the uh, air and they pollute the that blanket and they've drilled a hole through that blanket and now there's too much sunshine that is coming through from the sun that blanket is was also protecting us it's like a it was shielding us so that we do not have too much sunshine coming down to the earth but now because of these gases that go up into the atmosphere they've made a hole through the ozone layer and because of that pollution there's too much the temperatures on earth are beginning to rise too high the in the sea we see that there were icebergs in the sea the ice is beginning to melt you know and there's now a, a lots of fires right now as we speak in america they're having too many fires the veld veld fires that are burning all the forests around them so we're living in dangerous times because throughout the years people were not careful to look after the earth so uh, 
we need civil engineers who are environmental engineers who study the earth and let us know and uh, how to prevent pollution in the world around us. Okay, so that is the last slide that I had on uh, civil engineers. And um, what I'm gonna do now is maybe open it up uh, for questions. If you guys have any questions about civil engineering, about what we have uh, discussed today, I'm gonna open up the platform uh, for that. Thank you. Then I you can take over. You can stop screen sharing. Also. Any questions? You must still screen sharing. Okay. Let's see. There we go. So that you can see them. Any questions, please raise your hand. Any questions, please raise your hand. Naka? Maga, do you have a question? Um. Yes. Um, my question is, when I start making things out of paper, like paper bridges, they keep on falling apart. How should I stable them properly? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, yeah, so that is, yeah, you're beginning to be a civil engineer now because you're beginning to experiment with different kinds of materials and you start to realize that paper by itself just crumbles down. So paper will crumble, but so you need to get stiff paper like cardboard, right? And then you also will need, let's say for example, you might need to get yourself some glue to stick the paper together, right? It's just the same thing when we build a house, we use bricks, but we don't use bricks alone. We use what we call mortar. Mortar is what we make with cement. So the mortar is what we, be, we put between brick layers, and then it holds the bricks together. So in, in the yeah. same way, if you're gonna use cardboard, you, you have your different pieces of cardboard that you're going to use, and when you use them, remember to stick them together with glue and uh, things like that. Then you're beginning to experiment with materials. But that is good. I'm impressed that you are trying. That's what a good civil engineer does. Yeah, I try to make sculptures. Okay. But it's pretty hard. Pretty hard. Okay, then you can also ask Daddy to help you. I know he's got some engineering ability in him, man. So, but also sometimes you can check out, there are some YouTube videos that you can find if you Google, say projects that uh, you can make out of cardboard and things like that. Uh, Google those, there are some, you can get some instructions. There are some projects that you can make. YouTube has got that, Google has got that. And then you can follow those instructions, okay? And then try to use those until you make something um, with the materials that you have. So they'll give you the kind of materials that you can use. They'll give you the method you should use to do those things and until you do it. Okay, so try, try uh, Google and YouTube. Sure. Um, Tina? Um, my question is right my question is that i'm saying something i mean i'm in a 
something I'm saying is that some so people say that uh, people say that people say that uh, so in some places right very soon because of global warming it will start they'll start flooding mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think we can hear your question properly. Uh, can you repeat your question? No, 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 we can't hear you. Do, you. do you mind typing your question and then we can read it? I think that would be the best. Tina, your question wasn't clear, I think. You said in some places there will be flooding because of global warming. So what's the question? Tina? Okay, uh, maybe to answer what I think Tine is, uh, is referring to, I'll, ask, I'll answer what I think uh, Tine is asking. Okay, it is true, uh, Tine, that uh, global warming also has led to a lot of flooding. Because like I, I referred to, uh, global warming has changed the, the climate. Remember, the climate is the, way the, is the weather pattern over many, many years. So there's been a weather pattern that we knew that, for example, when, when will it rain and things like that. But over the years that has changed because of global warming, because we have too much sunshine coming through that uh, the, and does not bounce back to the atmosphere. So that has, has, has resulted in a whole lot of problems, including a flooding as, as one of them. Like I said, icebergs are beginning to melt in, the, in, in those areas where there's a lot of ice. Uh, where it's ice only, ice. Uh, uh, the, like the Greenland. Ice Sorry. Like Greenland and those places. Mm -hmm. Like that's right. Yes, the polar, the polar regions, as we call them. So they are also beginning to melt, which means, uh, you know, it's the things are changing around the world, and also generally the the way the weather has been has been uh, over the years has now been impacted because of global warming. Now we have more floods that we are getting. We are getting more of um, tsunamis, you know, and hurricanes, and all those things. There's a lot of natural disasters that are beginning to happen. But yes, it's a result. It has been linked back to global warming. Just to yeah, to clarify on what you were saying. Okay. Any other questions, guys? I don't know how, how many of you guys are ready to become civil engineers now. Or are interested, or at least to say I'm interested in becoming a civil engineer. Because it's so much I think fun. I'm interested. You are. I'm interested. Yes. Nice one, guys. So remember, at school, mathematics and science is your friend. When others are saying, no, math is hard, I don't like maths, I'm skipping math lessons, don't listen to them. Go for lessons, ask, get help, ask for help, and do your best, and you'll make a, an awesome engineer. Um, Uncle, Uncle Charles? Charles, um, um, Can you make um, oh, buildings... In, in, in space. Yeah, those are things that are, it depends what you mean in space. Those are things that are being investigated. Remember right now they've been sending satellites through to, to Mars and uh, such planets. They're trying to find out if it's possible to have life on other planets. So we have scientists that are busy doing that, those are, you know, those, and that they're, they're trying to find out if it's, 
it's possible to build you know buildings out there in space so we can't really build them in the air because a building needs a foundation that it has to to be on so and if we go to a star for example what we call a plan a planet if we if they find that it's possible to build on other planets then yes most definitely we can be able to build on other planets out there in space And tell me, do you guys do uh, job shadowing for kids, like kids who are still in school and stuff? Yes, that's a, a good one. Yes, we we do uh, have uh, programs like that that run. Like we have the South African Institute of uh, Civil Engineers that we call SAIE, uh, South S I S A I C E SAIE. So uh, they, we do have such programs where we interact with kids and we also go to their schools. We even have competitions that run every year for high school students, for example, where they also come maybe uh, they, we, we, they, and we have competitions there and they compete to build a bridge and then uh, we see which one is the best bridge, which doesn't fall and things like that. So yes, we can do job shadowing uh, for, for, for students. And if maybe it's something you would like to say, maybe personally contact me, those are things that can be arranged. You know? So we do more than just careers guidance. You can come through and you know, see, we can visit, for example, construction sites. Because the nice thing about our field is that you can always see things being done practically. So yes, job shadowing is something that can be done. Uh, it can be arranged if you want that kind of thing to be done. And you can then see the work firsthand for yourself. Let me attend now. Uh, Semi and, is it Kaila or Saila? How do you pronounce it? Kaila. Kaila. OK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You may ask the question. Too much fires in America. What's the question again? Why are there too much fires in America? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I've like I've explained before. We are relating scientists around the world are relating all this to global warming, and global warming is a result of pollution. Remember when we spoke about civil engineers as environmental engineers, we're speaking about avoiding polluting our environment. So fires in America are now becoming uncontrolled because the earth itself, remember I said there's a blanket around the earth called the ozone layer. It used to protect us so that not too much sun or, or heat from the sun can reach our earth. But now there's too much heat that is reaching the earth because there's a, now like a big hole due to global warming. And now because there's too much heat around the earth, what is happening is that when a fire starts, it's not as easy as it was before to quench that fire or to stop that fire from spreading because the earth is now already hotter than it was before. So the, these are the scientific things that we're beginning to discover. That's why we are saying environmental engineers must now start working on solutions so that we reduce pollution and then we can start reducing all these problems like uh, fires that we're seeing around the world and other natural disasters that we're seeing due to pollution around the world. Okay. I hope that answers you. Kaila. Thank you. Shop shop. Any more questions? Uh, any comments? I see Mother Wong is saying this up. Yes, Maka. How do you hold those parts together? Uh, which parts, uh, Maka? Uh, 
the bridge part. I mean the big, those big, big things that hold up the bridge. Those big lines. How do you carry them? Okay. It's impossible well, to carry. Yeah, uh, you'll see that. Uh, let me show you. Can I show you guys uh, from the slide? Ne? The, on the slide, you'll see there was one slide which had, um, let me open it, which had what we call cranes. I'm going to share it with you now. Okay. You can see it on this one here. It's holding uh, this railway, this piece of uh, railway line. You see it here. It's held up by this, which has a chain. I'll show it to you more clearly now in that other um, slide. Right, you see this, um, you see on this picture here, is it clear on the bottom right? There are some machines, those things that it look is. like- Yeah, those things that look like machines um, right at the bottom. Dr. Sheps, which screen is showing? Is it the full screen or? I see the full screen and also your notes. Yeah, I don't, I don't, okay. I think I see, is that what was happening throughout this presentation? Yeah. All right, so that's how I was saying I was using. Okay, now we see, you can just click on PowerPoint present, okay. Okay, so um, you can see on this bottom right-hand corner, ne? there you can see there are some machines on top of that building. We call those cranes. Do you see them? These yellowish uh, things there. We call them cranes. Cranes are what we use to lift heavy, heavy uh, uh, materials that we use to build anything. We we'll call them cranes. So that is what we use generally. And uh, there are different sizes of these cranes depending on the different kinds of structures we want to build. So yes, Maga, uh, when you're a construction engineer, you would understand all these kinds of, um, of uh, machinery that we use as engineers to make our life easy, to build big structures and things like that. So yes, it looks like it's something that is impossible to build but it can be done because engineers use machines. We have designed machines that help us to make our life easier, to make construction easier, you see. So that is what we use, Amara. we use cranes. You can also Google around and find out on YouTube about cranes and big machinery that is used to build uh, large buildings and large structures, okay. But how strong is it? It's, it's very strong. Remember, we design these things, which means uh, we, we, we design it in such a way that we know the limit or what we call the kind of weight that it can carry. So everything is a different kind of weight. It's just like um, there are things that your dad can carry because he's bigger and stronger than you. And, and there are things that, that you wouldn't carry yourself. And then there are things that you can say, I ah, you know what, I can carry this alone. But there are things that you say, you know, daddy, I need help. So it's this, in the same way, that is how we have designed our machinery. We design it, there's a, there are small cranes that you can find that can carry small objects. And then there are big cranes that can carry big weights. So we design them also, uh, uh, the people who design these are called uh, mechanical engineers or you can find uh, what we call also industrial engineers. So these are the guys who uh, specialize only in building these things that can carry heavy objects, these cranes and this machinery that can carry big objects. They also design them in such a way that they can move around. So that is what we, we, we call it designing as well. So yes, Maga, we look at them we find out uh, what weights we want to carry, and then we've designed the kind of machinery that will carry different kind of weights. And uh, uh, that is what we use. 
Um, but I'm sure that in. Oh. Oh, you wanted to. It's see. Not, I know if it's not stronger than a than a cream. Sorry. Because it only has five thousand muscles in its trunk. What is that? Oh, I was going to ask if elephants are stronger than cranes, but then I realized they only have 5,000 muscles in their trunk. <laughs> yeah, you'll see that, but elephants are also very strong because you'll see that uh, the, the trunk of an elephant is what it uses to carry, to, to break down trees and things like that. So sometimes engineers, you will find that, uh, especially if you watch a lot of channels that talk about nature and things like that, engineers look at nature. We look at nature and we find out what principle uh, you know, is used in nature. So you find that uh, the, the kind of way that uh, an elephant wraps uh, its trunk around a tree before it plucks it up by the roots is the kind of method that an engineer can use to say, how can I design something like that? So you find that in our cranes, we may have, for example, a, a rope made of a steel, a steel rope that we, we that, or a cable that is then tied around objects that we may want to pull down and things like that. So we use the same principle, but the things that we make, the machines we usually make will be stronger than animals, for example. So you can find that even our cranes can carry even animals. Okay, so yes. I hope that clarifies it for you, Mother. Lungile, Lungile is the end up. The material, what material is used to make the tunnel that goes to the sea in Napoli? Okay, yeah, we also use uh, concrete. Concrete is, you know, there are different types of concrete that we use. Concrete is, is mostly the structures, any structure is mostly concrete because um, of, of its strength. So, we use concrete and uh, we would have designed it. And we also have uh, what we call formwork. Formwork is uh, like um, before you, you, you cast, what we call casting the concrete, you have uh, the formwork, which means it's like the, the structure which we make with metal. And then we pour our concrete inside that structure. The nice thing about concrete when you pour it in the in a few hours, it starts hardening. What uh, it starts getting hard, and when it gets hard, then it it stays like that in the form that you would have made it. So then we remove those metal pieces that we would have put around the concrete before we pour it. Then when we remove them, that concrete remains by itself strong and uh, uh, strong like that. So it's made of concrete. Concrete is a mixture of cement some uh, gravel stones and some sand and with water. That is what we use to make concrete. And there are different kinds of strength or what we call strength for different kinds of concrete. Like for example, the concrete that you would use when you're building a house just for people to live in is different from the concrete that you will use to build a tunnel that goes through the sea or a tunnel that you know goes through a mountain. So it's different. We, uh, we also study these different kinds of strength. We call them the strength of the concrete. So, but it's all made of concrete and steel. Steel is like iron. Okay. So those are the main uh, yeah. materials that we use. And then my second question. Okay. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, since it is leaning, isn't it going to fall? Good question. I think there's a, another different kind of engineer. You make a good engineer, a civil engineer, uh, when I'm doing it. There's another kind of engineer that I didn't discuss with you guys. It's called a geotechnical engineer. Geotechnical engineer is also a civil engineer who deals with the soil. They study the soil, they study rocks, and they, uh, the main thing that they study is 
before you build a house, you must know the kind of soil that you're building your house on. If you remember in the Bible, Jesus Christ gave us a story about a wise builder. And he said his words are like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. You remember that story. Then he said when the waters came and the floods came, they could not just, uh, push that house over because it was built on a solid foundation. And then another man is a man who is not wise. He built his house on the sand. And when the storms came, they pushed that house because the sand was not strong to hold that house. So a geotechnical engineer is a civil engineer who studies the earth and where the buildings were building will be established or will be built on. So the Leaning Tower of Pisa, when it was first built, the engineer who did it was not clever enough for some reason, they did not look at the soil that was there. So they started building it. And because they did not look at the kind of soil, because sand is soil, there is something that we call a settlement. What happens is that the soil structure that you see on the ground has got some little uh, air spaces that are filled with air. And these are the ones that when you pour water into the ground, you've seen that water goes into the ground. It seeps into the ground. It's water going into those air spaces that are below the soil. You understand? So those air spaces, when we're doing construction, the thing that we do when we build a foundation, you'll see some guys use uh, what we call rollers. They compact it. By compacting it or making it stronger like that, pounding on it, and you know, by pounding on it, what we're doing is we're getting rid of the air spaces. Because if you don't get rid of the air spaces, over time, the building that you will build on top of that soil will start to make the air in that soil to, to ooze out of the soil. And then you start to have what we call settlement. So that is what happened with the Leaning Tower of Pisa. They, they, uh, they built it, and then it began to circle. We call it settlement when the air spaces in the soil that was carrying that building started to ooze out of the air and then the building started to shift in one direction. So uh, to the weaker side of the foundation. So then it began to, but the good thing about that, why it is a wonder today is that after some time, they thought that building was going to collapse totally, but it, it reached what we call the final settlement of the soil, which means that it could not settle anymore. All the air that could ooze out of the soil had left. Do you see it? So because it had left, it was left leaning like that and can't continue settling. So it's stuck like that. It has stuck like that for many, many, many years. But uh, of course it has become a wonder where people go to see it's a tourist attraction, but it's also is a, it, it, it's just a mistake which became a nice mistake to view, but actually it was a mistake. The engineer who did that made a very uh, big mistake. So as engineers, you will find that sometimes in your house, sometimes your wall is cracking. It's usually when a wall in the house is cracking, it means that there is settlement at the foundation. It means that when the guys were doing uh, construction, they were not careful to make sure the air spaces in the soil where the house is built has been removed so that there's no more settlement. When they don't do that, one side of the house can start to circle like this and the other side remains stagnant like this. So then there is different, there's a difference in the levels of the house, which results in a crack in the center. Do you see it? So that is the, the principle around the Leaning Tower of Pisa, it's a, it's a foundation problem. They should have taken care of the foundation when they did the construction. So yes, a civil engineer made a mistake there, but it's a nice mistake now. Uh, someone <laughs> is asking, can, can elephants help engineers in construction? <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, the other thing that uh, environmental engineers avoid is what we call uh, cruelty to animals. I wouldn't recommend that we use elephants and even animals, you know, but sometimes people have no choice. It's, let's say in the rural areas, you'll see that they use donkeys, they use cows to help them with work. 
we, we, we usually use animals to help us with work. But, you know, it's not necessary to go look for uh, elephants out there because we have machinery now. Nowadays, we have machines that we have designed. We don't have to make the lives of, of animals miserable. So we try to avoid using animals to help us in construction. So I wouldn't recommend it. It's actually, you could be arrested for using elephants to help you in construction. It would be a crime because environmentalists don't allow that and the government does not allow that. So don't use your, your elephant, please. That would be nice. the industrial revolution instead. <laughs> Lyell is a end up. Okay. How how do you put the lines that carry a bridge in the in the water? Uh, pardon. I said, how do you put the lines that carry a bridge in the water? How do you put the the lines that carry a bridge in the water? Oh, okay. I think I see what you mean. Like, um, uh, how do we construct a bridge over the water kind, kind of thing? Is that how you mean, Lyle? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's also uh, something that we, we do. I think by now I've, I've shown you guys that Engineers don't always, we work as teams. Remember what I said last time as well. Engineers work together as a team. And when we work as teams, we have water engineers who understand the behavior of water. We also have structural engineers who understand the behavior of structures. We also have geotechnical engineers who are still civil engineers. All of these people are civil engineers. And they understand uh, the foundation or you know things like that. So what we do as engineers, in the, we, these engineers study the, the base. Like for example, we want to build a bridge that will go over a big river. Excuse me, we, we understand, we make a study and find out what we call the base of that, um, of that river. Because we need to understand how uh, our, what we call columns. Remember, uh, columns are those things that hold up a structure. Your bridge goes on top, there are beams that go on top, and then you have your columns are the columns that go down, that hold the bridge up. So those columns are the ones that we design. So when we start pouring, we have methods, we have machinery that we use as civil engineers. The construction engineer, or the, the, the construction civil engineer, is the one who understands these, material, these uh, machines that we use to pour concrete into the water. So we have castings. And remember, I told you about those casings that we use, which are made of steel. And we, uh, we have them going all the way down to where these uh, uh, columns for the bridge will be located. And then uh, concrete is then poured Sometimes it's, it's poured in different stages, uh, which means in different times. And then it's poured in there. And then remember, like I said, the nice thing about concrete, when you pour it, it starts to harden. It starts to get strong. And in the presence of water, the concrete gets even stronger. So water is actually very good for concrete because when concrete has water, it gets even stronger. So that is what we use. So we, we build it in what we call phases. You start, you don't build it, you don't build that bridge all at once. You build it slowly as, as you build it. Let's say you start with a portion, then your machinery can come on top of this portion you have built. Then you, you move another portion like that. Then your machinery comes on top of this place and you start to build and you keep on building from the top of the bridge that you're making. So until the whole bridge is done, they'll be building and the machinery will be traveling on top of the area of the bridge that they've already built. Okay. You know, I want to recommend guys that uh, when you get time, go on YouTube and look for superstructures 
or just Google superstructures or on YouTube, just search for superstructures, the uh, building superstructures. You'll learn a lot about how these things, because I can't really demonstrate them right now. And I'm trying to even use my hands, but I know it won't be the best way to describe it. But life is easier now. You go on YouTube, I want you to look for superstructures or, or National Geographic superstructures. They have all these massive, massive projects and how machinery is used to build them. Then you will learn a lot from there. Okay. So Lyle, I hope I, I've tried my best to answer you. But I'd like to refer you to YouTube as well for that. Look for superstructures on YouTube. Okay. All right. No more questions. Can I have the next question? Um, if there are any. What is the best part of your job? <laughs> Money. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, okay, to be honest with you guys now. Excuse um, me, I but know, money is not is not an object. Yeah. Money is not a what? Money is not an object. Okay. It is. You're not <laughs> wrong. Is. Look, there no. are different opinions to that. Let me tell you uh, something that you need to understand. The, the most important thing about life, I think, don't let money be the only motivation for whatever you do. But I'm, I'm careful to use the word only because also you don't just want to do anything you do just for free. Everyone in the world, like we explained before, has got a gift and that gift is the thing that God has given you to look after you on earth. And the, uh, for, for it to work, that gift must be paid for it to work. When you use your gift, people must pay you for the gift that you use. So uh, when, you, uh, when you do that, do the thing that you love, but at the end of the day, don't forget to get paid for what you love to do. Because when you get money, that is where you get your food, the car that you need to drive to go to work, to make your life comfortable, uh, you need to be earning some money. Also, uh, I think one of the things that we need to un start understanding as Africans, which we didn't understand, I myself, when I was growing up, I just was, uh, you know, I began to understand later that there are people who go into business because of the gift that they have. Always find a way to turn your gift into a business so that you can make money from your gift. Your gift is something you already have in you. It's a part of you. No one will ever take it away from you. But money is something that you need to make. So you need to be able to be wise enough to say, how can I advance myself? How can I make myself better in the gift that I already have? I love buildings. I love doing water engineering. How do I make myself better? So that at the end of the day, I can get more money. And when I make more money, I can help more people. So there is uh, uh, absolutely nothing wrong with you targeting to get more money from the gift that you have. Actually, you must grow up with that attitude. Have, say, I, I want to have this gift. It must make me money at the end of the day and I'll be able to help a lot of people. I'll build more churches. You know, when we have money, we can build more churches. We can help the poor, that the needy that don't have money. You can, you can help your relatives. You can help your friends when they don't have money. So yes, always make sure that money is also an objective, Maga. It's not the only one, but it's an important one. The house you live in, is, you pay rent for it. The civil engineer who brings water to your house must be paid and you need money to pay him. So guys, always try to understand as you grow how can I turn my gift so that it makes money for me at the end of the day? All right, everyone is happy. Zena, over to you then. Thank you, Uncle, Thank you, Uncle Charles, for coming. Um, um, 
I, can we have someone to pray for us? Sammy and, and Kayla. So me and Kayla. Can you pray? And can you pray for us, Sammy and Kayla? No, 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 and and listen. Please be with us as they were gonna start closing the the Sabbath school. Please Lord be with us so that we can enjoy our day today. And thank you Lord for allowing us to enjoy us. Please Lord protect us more so when we start doing this again. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. You